Well, thank you. Again, welcome to the Mesa City Council meeting for the evening of April the 18th. Uh, all of our council is present with the exception of Mr. Luna, who is out of town and excused. We will begin our meeting with an invocation offered by Dr. Pamela Anissa Nadir, who is president of the Islamic Social Services Association of the USA. And we know it's particularly a meaningful night for you to be here during Ramadan, so thank you for fitting this in. I know that that wasn't convenient, I'm sure. Uh, following the invocation, we will have the Pledge of Allegiance. So please stand for the invocation and remain standing for the pledge. First of all, I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here. It's an honor uh, to be here with you all this evening. During this holy month of Ramadan and on this day after uh, your people of various traditions and faiths have come together to remember you, dear Lord, we come together today to ask for your guidance, your wisdom, and your support of our mayor, our vice mayor, and city council members. Please help our city leaders engage in meaningful discussion on behalf of the residents of the city of Mesa. Please grant them an empathetic heart and wise judgment. Help them as they consider ways to improve the economy, health, mental health, and well-being of our diverse city. Bless our leaders to foster a community that is concerned about our children, our families, our homeless community members, our small business owners, those who are doing well, and those who are struggling. Please bless our leaders to sow seeds of peace. Bless them to grow closer as leaders, no matter their various perspectives, for the good of our city. Bless our leaders to stand firmly for justice and to nurture the bonds of community. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The first item on our agenda is awards and recognitions, and we have two proclamations on our agenda tonight. First is National Volunteer Week. It's from April the 17th through the 23rd. Uh, there are more than 77 million volunteers in the U.S. who give of their time and talent to help our communities, and Mesa is certainly blessed with a lot of them. The City of Mesa's Citywide Volunteer Program co Coordinator, Bethany Freeland, is here to accept the proclamation and to give a quick update about our volunteers. Beth Bethany, if you're okay, I know you're, it looks like you're a little hobbled, please. Thank you. But please uh, tell us why volunteers are important in the City of Mesa. Mayor, Vice Mayor, um, Council Members, thank you so much for having us here. Uh, National Volunteer Week is a time where we celebrate the gifts that volunteers give us all across the nation, um, not just to uh, recognize them, but also to celebrate them. Here in Mesa um, in 2021, we had 4,600 volunteers um, give over 70,000 hours of service to the city. Um, and this is in our programs, uh, in our events, um, and the in-kind dollar amount, uh, a volunteer hour is worth a dollar amount, and that is set um, nationally. Um, the, our volunteers last year in 2021 gave the city over $2 million of in-kind service, um, and that is uh, invaluable, invaluable. I know that it is a number, but it is still invaluable. Um, and our volunteers are, serving in our, um, a lot of our departments. Uh, we have long-term volunteer programs in fire and medical, uh, Mesa PD, uh, both of the museums, all of the libraries, Parks and Rec, the Mesa Arts Center. Um, I think I got everybody. Um, and we're lucky enough to have representatives from some of those organizations here with us tonight. Um, we have representatives from the Mesa Arts Center, Mesa Fire and Medical, um, the Arizona Museum of Natural History, and the library. Um, so we're really happy to have them here tonight. It's very important that they're here to help us accept this proclamation um, because it is uh, in, ser in their service that we accept it. Um, so thank you so much for having us. Um, and we're grateful for your support always, and we are very happy to accept this proclamation. 
Thank you, Bethany. I think what we'll do, uh, because uh, we have a, we want to take a great picture with all these great volunteers, but why don't, we'll, we'll do the next proclamation just so we don't get up and down three times tonight. So <laughs> if you please bear with us for just a, a few more minutes and we'll have a, do, do these, pro we'll take the photographs in just a minute. Okay. But thank you thank very you much, so much, Bethany. Uh, next, we have an Arbor Day proclamation presented by Donna DeFrancesco, Conservation Coordinator from the Environmental Management and Sustainability Department. Donna, please, uh, it's good to see you again. Please tell us why Arbor Day is important in Mesa, Arizona. Yes, I'd be glad to. Uh, greetings, Mayor Giles and council members. Uh, we're excited to be with you tonight for the event we know that you look forward to all year, the reading of the Mayor's Arbor Day Proclamation, right? <laughs> Um, however, there's so much to share with you this year that I'm going to suggest to our audience that they visit our website uh, at mesaaz.gov forward slash Arbor Day, uh, where we're going to have the proclamation, details on upcoming classes, and some tree plantings. I also wanted to let you know that I decided to leave out the tree puns this year. Um, I was kind of stumped on what to say, and I know they're kind of sappy, okay? All right, great. <laughs> I have an uncle who would be really proud of me right now. All right, so <laughs> I'm excited once again to let you know that our Tree City USA application for the 2021 activities was approved, and we're proud that we're now a Tree City USA for our 12th year. And uh, to tell you that the Tree City USA program is sponsored by the Arbor Day Foundation. Uh, it helps provide cities with directions, technical support, uh, assistance, and public attention about trees, urban forest, and the, the health of those forests in our communities. The National Arbor Day is always the last Friday in April. So it's officially on April 29th this year. And so that's a week from this Friday. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that this Friday is, our, is Earth Day. So hopefully everybody's celebrating that as well. But there's something extra special about Arbor Day this year. The first official Arbor Day was celebrated in Nebraska in 1872, meaning that this year marks the 150th anniversary of Arbor Day celebrations. So I think that's a real cool thing. For the City of Mesa and our recently adopted climate action plan, our urban forests take on even more importance and we look to trees to provide solutions. Uh, for many of our ambitious climate action goals, I know you were just talking about that in the study session, so uh, we know that trees that uh, are real superheroes of nature. They provide shade, which can lower surface and air temperatures. They help clean our air by absorbing carbon dioxide while also producing oxygen. They provide habitat for wildlife. They can help us save energy when they're properly placed around buildings to reduce air conditioning needs and so much more. Looking at our recent tree activities to tell you about, I wanted to remind you that last year for the Arbor Day Proclamation, we invited Masavi Paria to talk to you about the West Mesa River Community Heat Project. It's a collaborative effort with ASU, City of Mesa, Arizona Sustainability Alliance, and with his group, which was Unlimited Potential. Uh, we are excited to tell you that that project started planting trees this past October. Uh, many of you joined us many of you here, uh, to do some of those tree plantings, so thank you very much. And it will be completed in early May. They'll be finishing up that grant uh, with the final numbers estimated to be over 300 trees planted at our West, in West Mesa at schools and in our city parks. So very cool project. There's more exciting news about trees to share with you, and I've asked a special guest to tell you about it. But before I ask him to step up to the podium, I just wanted to mention that we do have, on Saturday, April 30th, uh, a workshop at Red Mountain Library called Trees Are Cool. Uh, it's a tree care workshop for homeowners. And following the program, we'll do some tree plantings at the Monarch Haven and Reading Sanctuary. They're right at the, at the library. Again, the details can be found, mesaaz.gov forward slash Arbor Day. Uh, and now for the rest of the news, please help me welcome Peter Condon. He's the program director of the Landscape Horticulture and Sustainable Agriculture Program at Mesa Community College, and also the co-director of the Mesa Community College Arboretum. So come on up, Peter. Thank you, Donna. And uh, thank you, Mayor Giles, uh, Vice Mayor Duff, and council members for inviting me here tonight. It's a really exciting time to be at MCC. Uh, as you all know, uh, <coughs> MCC is home to the largest rose garden in the southwestern United States. And on April 30th, the rose garden is celebrating their 25th anniversary. So talking about volunteers uh, between the rose garden and the arboretum, which I'll say in a second, uh, last year or, or the last time we, we tallied up the volunteer hours, it came up to over $80,000 in volunteer labor credit. And 
If you know anything about the school budget, uh, $80,000 goes a long way. So I'm really, uh, really glad to hear about that. Uh, the other exciting thing that is happening is in 2018, since we've got the Rose Garden, the Rose Garden's been established, and we have a landscape horticulture program, and the students travel the campus. It's a living laboratory. So with Sean Whitcomb, as a life science faculty, and I, uh, and then uh, Steve Preeb, who was also teaching botany there, uh, we decided to just make the whole campus an official arboretum. So we applied to ArbNet, which is uh, located at the Morton Arboretum in Chicago, uh, for uh, 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 official arboretum status, and we were approved. So in 2018, we became an official arboretum, and arboretum is sort of a botanical garden, but on a larger park-like scale. So it's, it's a living library. Uh, all the trees are numbered, they go into a database, we keep track of their health and the size, and we've got over 1,300 trees right now on that little campus up the street there. Uh, and the shrubs, there's thousands of shrubs, and of course roses, uh, that's another story. <laughs> but on uh, April 29th, on Arbor Day, uh, we're going to be uh, celebrating a big, big accomplishment and something that I'm really proud to announce is that MCC is now the first and only community college in the state of Arizona that is a tree campus USA. So this, so this, is, this is really, really big news for us, and uh, we're all really excited to, uh, to announce that. Uh, so on Friday, Arbor Day, uh, at uh, I believe it's 8.30 in the morning, uh, we'll start with uh, a presentation, and then we'll plant five trees, uh, and uh, we'll just carry on from there. Uh, and I think, I think that's about all I've got to say. <laughs> that's a lot, so good stuff. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very okay, much. Okay, well, we'll be right down for a photo with that uh, award as well, but our, our, the third item on our agenda for awards and recognitions tonight is the City Auditor's Office, who was just successfully peer-reviewed. This is important because the organization that sets government auditing standards requires a peer review every three years. Passing this review with no deficiencies shows that our audit, auditing uh, processes are both reliable and transparent. So we uh, congratulate City Auditor Joe Listano and his, uh, and his uh, all of his assistants. And Joe, we're, we're gonna take a, a photo with you tonight, but again, we just wanted to recognize this and, and I want the taxpayers of Mesa to know that, that we do have a, uh, a peer-reviewed auditing uh, department in the City of Mesa that is uh, providing some oversight in, in, into the financial dealings of the city, and we're very proud of that. So, Council, will you join me in front for a few photographs now, please? <coughs> So grateful quilt here, oh. which was um, crafted by all the departments who have long term volunteer. Step up the programs. microphone so people don't hear what you're saying. Um, this is our So Grateful Quilt project. Uh, we made it in honor of all our city volunteers. All the departments that have long term volunteer programs, like I mentioned, um, created the squares and then they were expertly quilted together by. Our two library volunteers back here. Let's show it. So we were wondering if we could yes. hold it up in the picture. Yeah. Just have okay. to be careful because there's. Some... Oh, this was on display in the city yes. office building, wasn't it? Yes. yes. Okay. So we were wondering if we could hold it. Beautiful. You want to grab a corner there, and we'll. Uh... Well, if we're gonna do it in the picture. We can yeah. 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 Well, we're yeah. We're tall. Yeah. We're tall. Stand right here and hold up this proclamation for the photo. Did we get everybody? Kevin, tell us how Maybe we we'll do one with the quilt and one without. Okay. Okay. There's nobody behind the quilt, right? No. Okay. All right. Let's all look at Kevin and smile. Thank you so much, Mayor. Yeah, that is a beautiful quilt. Thank you. Thanks. I don't have enough to hold, so I'm going to hand you this proclamation, okay. too. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> okay, we're going to bring a tree in. Great. Okay. <laughs> you don't want to be upstaged by the quilt. So. <laughs> Congratulations. Yes, Thank, oh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Stand right here, you bet. 
Uh, why don't you stand here and we'll put this. Uh, we go? Yeah, I think. I, yeah, that's great. Well, I don't want to You're fine. Okay. Are we all good? I will. You know I'm sad. All right. Welcome, Joel. Congratulations on having a peer-reviewed auditing <laughs> office in the city. Kevin, do it again because they were moving. Okay, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. That was that was fun, wasn't it? We've got great things going on in the city of Mason. Uh, next item on our agenda is approval of the consent agenda. Mr. Christopher, would you please read the consent agenda? Hey, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. These are the items on the consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk will be considered as a group by the City Council and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion unless a Council Member or Citizen request in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered as a separate item. Item 2, approval of minutes of previous meetings is written. Item 3A, act on liquor license application for Superstition Farms Incorporated, one day event May 5th. 3440 South Haas Road. Item 4A, act on contract to purchase compaction testing equipment for the engineering department. Item 4B, act on contract to purchase data backup and storage for the Department of Innovation and Technology. This purchase is funded by American Rescue Act plan funds. Item 4C, act on contract to purchase two portable chemical identifiers for the Mesa Fire and Medical Department. This purchase is a grant funded by the Arizona Department of Homeland Security. Item 4D, act on contract to purchase audiovisual equipment for the Mesa Police Department. Item 4 4E, act on one-year term contract with four years of renewal options for traffic signal maintenance services for the Transportation Department. Item 4F, act to ratify emergency purchases of bulk methanol for wastewater treatment for the Water Resources Department. Item 4G, act on three-year term contract with two years of renewal options for automotive batteries for fleet services, water resources, and energy resources departments. Item 4H, act on contract to purchase one rollback trailer for the Water Resources Department as requested by the Fleet Services Department. Item 4I, act on contract to purchase three backhoe loaders for the Energy and Water Resources Departments, as requested by the Fleet Services Department. Item 4J, act on contract to purchase three mini excavators for the Energy Resources Department, as requested by the Fleet Services Department. Item 4K, act on contract to purchase three tilt trailers for the Energy Resources Department, as requested by the Fleet Services Department. Item 4L, act on contract to purchase five tag trailers for the Energy Resources Department, as requested by the Fleet Services Department. Item 4M, act on the use of a cooperative contract for a 10-month term contract with four one-year renewal options for lubricants, oils, and grease for the Water Resources Department. Item 4N, act on dollar limit increase to the term contract and two years of renewal options for water, wastewater treatment, and pool chemicals for the Water Resources Department, Parks, Recreation, and Community Facilities Department, and the Materials and Supply Warehouse. Item 4O, act on one-year term contract with two years of renewal options for three master job order contracts for transportation construction services. Item 5A, act on resolution authorizing the issuance and sale of general obligation bonds series 2022 and General Obligation Refunding Bonds Series 2022. Item 5B, Act on Resolution Authorizing the Sale, Execution, and Delivery of Utility Systems Revenue Obligations Series 2022 and Utility Systems Revenue Refunding Obligations Series 2022. Act, item 5C, Act on Resolution Approving and Authorizing a City Manager to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with the Arizona Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force and to accept grant funds for training and equipment for the Mesa Family Advocacy Digital Forensics Unit. Items 5D through 5T are resolutions supporting the submittal of grant applications and authorizing the city manager to accept and administer subsequent awarded funds. Specifically, item 5D is a grant application for Alice Cooper's Solid Rock Teen Centers to the Akchin Indian community. Item 5E is a grant application by Carry Me Productions to the Akchin Indian community. 
Item 5F is a grant application by Job Crisis Arizona to the Akachin Indian community. Item 5G is a grant application for Desert Sounds Performing Arts to the Akachin Indian community. Item 5H is a grant application by Gene Lewis Boxing Club and Youth Center to the Akachin Indian community. Item 5I is a grant application by Save the Family Foundation of Arizona to the Akachin Indian community. Item 5J is a grant application by Alice Cooper's Solid Rock Teen Centers to the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation. Item 5K is a grant application by Arizona Byrne Foundation to the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation. Item 5L is a grant application by Carry Me Productions to the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation. Item 5M is a grant application for Shab Crisis Arizona to the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation. Item 5N is a grant application by the Energy Resources Department to the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation. The funds will be used for the Mesa Electric Utility Summer Indoor Health and Safety Program. Item 5.0 is a grant application by the Parks, Recreation, and Community Facilities Department to the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation. The funds will be used for the Making Waves Scholarship Program. Item 5P is a grant application by Desert Sounds Performing Arts to the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation. Item 5Q is a grant application by Gene Lewis Boxing Club and Youth Center to the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation. Item 5R is a grant application by Junior Achievement of Arizona to the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation. Item 5S is a grant application by Mesa United Way's Helen's Hope Chest to the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation. Item 5T is a grant application by Save the Family Foundation of Arizona to the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation. Item 5U, Act on Resolution Approving and Authorizing the City Manager to enter into a development agreement with Southwest Gas Corporation related to approximately 10 and a half acres of land located near the northeast corner of Ellsworth Road and Elliott Road for the purpose of opting into the Elliott Road Technology Corridor. Item 5V, Act on Resolution Approving and Authorizing the City Manager to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with the Town of Florence for the Mesa Regional Dispatch Center to provide temporary 911 fire and emergency medical dispatch services. Item 5W, Act on Resolution setting May 16th, 2022, as a date of the public hearing for the modification of the assessment rates for the Mesa Town Center Improvement District Number 228, and consideration of the fiscal year 2022-2023 annual assessment at the modified rate. Item 6A, introduction of ordinance regarding ZON 21-00921 for property located north of Southern Avenue and east of Crisman Road. Rezone of the planned area development overlay and site plan review to allow for a multiple residence development. Item 6B, introduction of ordinance regarding ZON 21-01024 for property located south of Pecos Road on the east side of the Haas Road alignment. Rezone with a plan area development overlay and site plan review to allow for an industrial development. Item 6C, introduction of ordinance regarding ZON 21-00435 for property located east of Greenfield Road on the north side of Baseline Road. Site plan modification for multi-tenant retail building of the drive through Item 7A, Act on Ordinance amending Table 1 and Title 5, Chapter 17 of the Mesa City Code entitled Mesa Development Impact Fees by removing the stormwater drainage impact fee from the table to confirm the discontinuation of this fee. Item 7B, Act on Ordinance regarding ZUN 21-01219 for property located on the southeast corner of McKellips Road and Country Club Drive. Rezone and site plan review to develop a restaurant of the drive through Item 7C, Act on Ordinance regarding ZON 21-01116 for property generally located west of Power Road on the south side of McKellips Road. Rezone and site plan modification to allow for development of a daycare facility with outdoor activities. And Item 7D, Act on Ordinance regarding ZON 21-00356 for property generally located east of Power Road on the north side of Bray Road. Rezone with a planned area development overlay and site plan review to allow for development of an industrial building. Mayor and council members, these are the items on the consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Christopher. Uh, Ms. Mosley, do we have any blue cards requested for an item on the consent agenda? No request, Mayor. All right, thank you. Uh, I see there's a motion made by Mr. Thompson, seconded by Mr. Heredia. Please vote. Thank you. That motion passes unanimously with uh, Councilmember Luna absent. Uh, next item on, on our agenda is item 8A. This is to take action on the subdivision plat entitled Map of Dedication for Eastmark Development Unit Number 1, located along Ellsworth Road between Elliott and Warner Roads. This item was from, removed from the consent agenda to allow Councilmember Thompson to uh, declare a conflict. He will not be voting on this item. Is there a motion to proceed with this item? Thank you. I see that Mr. Freeman's made a motion seconded by Mr. Heredia. Any discussion? If not, please cast your vote. Okay, that uh, po passes with five yeses with Mr. Thompson abstaining and Councilmember Luna absent. 
Uh, that concludes the items on our agenda for this meeting. Is there a motion to adjourn? Thank you, Ms. Spilsbury and Mr. Freeman. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. We are adjourned. Thank you.